Good morning. Please stand. God's people to give praise and thanks to the God who is kind and merciful and compassionate for his great love for us we give thanks and we begin our day and our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist by calling to mind our sins and confidently ask the Father's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and one day bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us praise the glory of our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds 
that those who are just might be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. 
When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what, what, what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace. There it will be wailing and grinding of teeth, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. We gather this Sunday, we continue our reading from Matthew 13, where there are a series of parables that talk about the kingdom. And these parables we hear this morning are sometimes referred to as mirror parables, because they are held up for us to look at, and in looking at them, see ourselves in them. And it is important to remember that these parables have a lesson to teach us this day at this moment in our lives. And that first parable of the weeds and the wheat is an important parable to remind us that in our midst there are good and there are evil. In the best person there's a little bit of evil and in the evil person there's a little bit of good. And God allows the evil and the good to exist together so that from the good we can see a response that will bring his kingdom about. When we see injustice, we should be moved to bring justice to that moment. When we see someone being treated unfairly, we should be ones who come and help them in their need. When we see someone who is needing of care, we should respond to care for them. And where the truth is not being spoken, we should speak the truth. The weeds and the weed grow together until the end of time. But those who will be rewarded are the ones who look at the evil, look at the bad, look at the weeds and respond and somehow bring the kingdom of God to that moment. That somehow in us, we are moved to bring goodness there. And it doesn't have to be monumental. As the second parable reminds us, even the smallest, the most insignificant act can have an effect. I find it amusing and amazing. I'm not sure which word to use. 
that now that we're wearing these masks on our faces, you can't tell if somebody's smiling at you. I used to go shopping on Saturday morning at the tops and people would smile and nod. Now they put their heads down. We've put these masks on our faces and we've lowered our eyes. We don't look at each other. You can see a smile on a person's face by looking at their eyes. A little kindness, a little nod, a little recognition might be all that someone needs to make their day. They may have had a bad week, a terrible week, but looking at you, they see you go by and you acknowledge them. And you don't even have to be smiling through your mask. Just look at them. A little note, a little call. It's amazing how in the first few weeks of this pandemic, people were calling everybody. And I think people have forgotten that. The calls have gotten fewer and fewer. We could call each other. Just a little bit of that can grow into something big and wonderful. You can make someone's day. And why do we do this? Because like the yeast in the dough, our goodness, our sharing, our faith being shared and spread around can have an influence on the entire surroundings around us. Like the yeast in the flour, we make a difference. If every person in this church would make a conscious effort to make the world a better place. Years ago when I was younger, <clears throat> and I was younger. I used to listen to this radio program by Dr. Laura Schlesinger, and she always ended her talk show by saying, let's try to end our day by being able to say, there is no evil in the world today because of me. Wouldn't that be wonderful if every day at the end of your day, you and I could say together, the world's a better place today because of me. There's more joy. There's a little bit of forgiveness. There's a little bit of happiness. There's a little bit of support because of me. There is no evil in the world because of me today. But there is a difference. The world is stronger and better and kinder. And all of this is the reflection of the God who is loving, compassionate, good, and kind. These are mirror parables for us. We should look at them and see ourselves in them and see how we are making a difference in the kingdom of God and whether or not that kingdom is stronger because of us, our actions, and our words. Let us pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confidently we place before the Father our prayers and our needs. Let us pray that we will always live our lives imitating the kindness and mercy of our God, and in doing so, build up the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are involved in our judicial and legal systems. May they always seek justice, protect human rights, and respect all individuals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering because of the coronavirus, may the sick know healing, those who care for them know strength and blessing, and those who have died know eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts, our homes, and in our world, 
and for an end to all war, violence, and ethnic unrest, and for God's protection on all who serve in our military. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. In silence, let us mention our own particular needs and intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for all who have died, especially Bishop Edward Kimmick, Archie Twitchell, and Rudy Sass, whom we remember in this Eucharist. May God welcome them home to everlasting life and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and grant our needs, for we pray confidently in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. 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 O God, who in one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice of your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered in honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he has freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he has given us life eternal. And so with the angels and the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we join in a hymn to your glory as we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all who serve your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you always. Let us give one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, those who at this time cannot share in the Eucharist, we invite you to pray a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
dear Holy Spirit, There are just two parish announcements. First of all, I'd like to tell you that Father John is out of the hospital and he is recuperating at home. The surgery was successful, but he's still undergoing a lot of um, pain and discomfort, but he's struggling through it. And he asks our prayers that as he continues the healing process, he will come to a complete healing and a full restoration in ministry. So continue to pray for him. The first part is over the surgery. And now he's in the post-surgery period and he has to pray for healing and for strength. So continue to pray for Father John each day as we pray that God will heal him and restore him to full ministry. I also want to announce that beginning the first weekend in August, we're going back to the regular Mass schedule. Mass will be at 8, 9.30 and 11.15 beginning the first weekend in August. I didn't realize how many of you people hate noon mass. <laughs> Holy smokes. Anyways, but uh, masses on the first weekend of August will be at 8, 9, 30, 11, 15. And we hope that we still have enough people to clean and sanitize the church after each mass so we can stay on that schedule. Right now, it seems like we could be able to do that. So as long as we have people who are willing to stay after mass and help us to clean and sanitize, We'll be able to stand it. So again, the first weekend in August, masses will be at 8, 9.30, and 11.15. I hope you're all happy. <laughs> Please stand. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.